Hi everyone, I'm just about to start my workout for today. Um, today I am using my pink oogie ball which weighs eight pounds and I'm also using my jump rope, but if you do not have either or both of those things, please stick around. After I'm finished doing the workout, I will explain and demonstrate all of the exercises and I will provide equipment free modifications for those of you who don't have the equipment I'm using today but still want to do the workout right along with me. I usually do all that before the workout, but today I'm gonna to do it afterwards because I just wanna go ahead and get right into it. So let me know which of those two options you prefer. Let me know if you like to see everything explained and demonstrated and see all the beginner modifications and the equipment free modifications before I do the workout, or if you like to just watch me do the workout and then afterwards um, see all that stuff demonstrated and explained. This workout is broken up into five minute segments, so I'm including it on my playlists of five minute workouts, 10 minute workouts, 15, 20, 30 minute workouts, because again, you can mix and match. I've been doing this a lot lately so that you can customize the workouts, but we are starting with a quick five minutes of interval training, just a quick little circuit, and then I'm doing jump rope, and then we're just gonna keep repeating that as many times as you want to, so the workout can be as long as you want it to be. We're on intervals. I have my interval timer set for 10 seconds rest, 20 seconds work, and 10 rounds, that's five minutes. So let's go ahead and get started with our first little circuit of exercises. Um, if you do have an oogie ball, go ahead and grab it. Grab your jump rope if you have one and if you're using one today. Take a minute to make sure you're good and warmed up and when you're ready, let's go. I'm sorry about the lawn mowing and the weed whacking and the leaf blowing. Um, my gardeners are here, but they'll be gone in like two minutes. So if it's annoying you, just uh, stick it out with me for these first couple minutes. It'll be over soon, okay? So um, I'm gonna start my watch and then I'm gonna start my timer. Remember that we always start with our 10 second rest interval. So my watch is going. And my timer's going. This is a 10 second rest interval to get ready. And the timer moves again. We're gonna start with our first exercise of holding my booty ball overhead. It's gonna be a weighted squat and then an opening knee twist. Alternating sides. Remember these work intervals are short, only 20 seconds. So move quickly, as quickly as you can without sacrificing your form. Next is going to be forward lunges. I'm lunging forward onto my oogie ball. Here we go. Okay, quickly grab that or towel, something you can get comfortable on for our ab exercises. We're starting with Russian twists. I swear they're usually in and out of here in like 10 minutes. I don't know what they're working on after today. But I don't want to wait any longer to start the workout because it's already getting late in the morning and uh, I'm also trying to beat the rain. Okay, oogie leg lift, so I'm squeezing my oogie ball. I think they're leaving now, I just heard the gate close. In between my ankles and just lifting and lowering the legs, controlling that movement on the way up controlling on the way down. Last exercise. Got my feet up on the oogie ball. And I'm gonna do a push up and two reptile knee tucks. And that's it, that's the circuit. We're just gonna repeat it one more time. And that's our five minutes. Our first five minutes of interval training. Okay, so starting again with squats and then a big knee twist.
forward lunges onto the ball. Leg lift. That's it, that's our first five minutes. If you have no time today, you can be done, I don't care. Five minutes is better than nothing. And like I mentioned at the start of the workout, I have a whole playlist of workouts that are only five minutes long and I'm including this workout on that playlist. So, if that's how you found this workout. If you found this workout because you were looking for something super short and you specifically picked a workout off of that playlist of five minute workouts and that's all you intended to do today and all you wanna to do today, then you're done. Five minutes is better than nothing. So there's a reason, there are several reasons really, why I have a whole playlist of workouts that are only five minutes long. And that's reason number one. Five minutes is better than nothing. It's better to do five minutes, if that's all the time we've got today, than to just do nothing. It's better to get those reps than to not get them. It's better to burn those calories than to not burn them. So, always better that you do something instead of nothing. But the other main reason is because it helps make sure that you're staying in the habit of working out every day. Because don't you always hear, I don't know if it's true or not. It's not like I've uh, independently verified this information with you know, years and years of involved research, but I think we always hear that little anecdote, whether it's true or not, I don't know, but that it takes 30 days to form a habit. Right, so in order to get in the habit of making daily exercise part of your routine, uh, you have to do it for 30 days. And that's really hard to do. But then, unfortunately, once you've done that, 
It doesn't take 30 days to break the habit. And you know, and this part I know from experience is most definitely true, that after only a few days you can break a habit that you've spent a month or more working so hard to form, right? So if you don't have time, and so you skip your workout, that's only one day, you'll probably be fine, but it only takes a few days of doing that before you break this habit of working out every day. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So with a quick five or 10 minute workout, you can avoid that, all right? You're not gonna like get in the best shape of your life and lose a ton of weight and gain all this strength and look amazing by just working out for five minutes every day. It takes more than that, obviously, but the five minute workouts are great for when you really just have no time. And they're great because they help you to stay in the habit of uh, doing a workout every day. So, obviously, I'm still going. So, even though I have included this on my playlist of five minute workouts, because you can just do that first five minutes if you want. I'm gonna be repeating it a few times. So I'm adding on two more intervals of jump rope left. I'm adding on this five minutes of additional cardio. So if you have only 10 minutes today, you can stop after we're done with the jump rope or you can keep going with me in five minute increments and whenever you're out of time, you can stop. So if you just wanna do 10 minutes today, you've got only 20 seconds of work left. If you wanna do 15, stick with me. I'm gonna do another uh, two rounds of my circuit. So the same exact thing as the first five minutes. I'm gonna do that again. The timer's about to beep. As soon as it starts beeping, that means my five minutes is up. Hear the beep. So that means you can stop if you want. I like to keep going until the beeping stops, just because it's a thing I do. So it's like an extra 15 seconds or so of skipping. I like to finish strong and I like to feel like I'm uh, making up for whatever uh, however many reps I might have missed tripping over my jump rope hope that time that I lose out of my work interval when I'm tripping okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get right into um, my circuit again it's gonna be identical to the first five minutes. forward lunges onto the ball. Leg lift. 
push-ups. One push-up, two rep pound detox. exercise. So we're 15 minutes in already. So he goes by fast. If 15 minutes is good for you today, if you selected this workout off the playlist of 15 minute workouts, because that's what you wanted to do today and you're done, great job. You can be done. Do your bonus burpee. Take a couple minutes to stretch. Have a shower. Get something to eat. Get on with your day. Obviously, I'm not done yet. You see, I started my timer again, and now I'm doing another jump rope section. So the timer is still set exactly the same way it was set for the first 15 minutes. I didn't change it. 10 second rest to intervals, 20 second work intervals, and 10 rounds for a total of five minutes. So, again, we're just moving forward in five minute increments. So, if you do this jump rope section with me that we're on now, and then call it a day, that'll be a 20 minute workout. Not bad. If you're starting to wonder, how long am I, is she gonna go? I'm just gonna do 30 minutes today, okay? So, if you wanna keep going with me,
after this jump rope section. I'm just gonna do everything once more, okay? I'm gonna do five minutes of my circuit. So just twice more for our little circuit and then one more five minute section of jump rope. That's it, okay? And it's going by pretty quickly because it's broken up into just five minute sections, you know, in the, the circuit. It's only 20 second work intervals. And we're only doing the circuit twice each, each round. So it goes by pretty quickly. I was actually gonna do an hour of this, but, and I might still, although I'm thinking I'm probably just gonna be good with half an hour today, but um, obviously you can keep going with it as long as you want. If you want a 45 minute workout, you know, just keep going for as long as you want. That's totally fine. Um, typically, lately, like if my workout takes me, if the workout itself takes me less than 30 minutes, I've been adding on an additional 30 minutes of cardio, just like this moderate paced cardio with my jump rope, 10 seconds rest, 20 seconds work, but instead of 10 rounds, I set my timer for 60 rounds. So, and a lot of the workouts have just been over an hour long on their own lately. That's just what I've been wanting to do lately. My body's been wanting these longer workouts, so I was just gonna go ahead and do this for a full hour today, but I don't think I'm going to, I think 30 minutes is gonna be enough for me today because I just have a really busy day ahead of me. I'm kind of stressed out about not getting stuff done. So I am incorporating, I look at it like a 15 minute hit workout plus 15 minutes of moderate paced cardio doing uh, interval jump rope. So that's good enough for me today. Okay, two more uh, intervals of jump rope. The other thing you'll notice too is that I'm not taking time to rest in between these five minute segments. I'm moving as quickly as I can from one segment to the next because I do want this to feel like one long continuous 30 minute workout as opposed to six tiny little five minute workouts. So this is our last jump rope interval for now. So again, when my timer does that long series of beeps, I'm gonna keep going until the beeping stops, but you don't have to. It's gonna beep right now. See, that's like weird how I instinctively know exactly what 20 seconds feels like after doing this for so long. So you can stop anytime. I'm just gonna stop beeping in just another second. There we go. So I always do that. You don't have to. All right, so now resetting very quickly. That's 20 minutes. We're 20 minutes in, so if you're done, do your bonus burpee, stretch, shower, have some lunch, and get on with your day. If you wanna do 30 minutes with me, let's keep going. Starting our circuit again with these squats. Overhead weighted squat, opening knee twist.
Russian twists. squats It's a race to get in place and time for these Russian twists. skipping, starting with our 10 second rest interval, and now we skip for 20. So, uh, in that last time through, uh, well the first time through the circuit, in that last round, my ball slipped 
from between my legs. So that's one thing that I'm always warning you about when choosing your weight to make sure that whatever kind of weight you're using is safe in case something like that happens. So we'll talk more about that after the workout. Part of the reason it happened, if not the whole reason, is because I'm wearing pants. Just at that in-between stage where obviously in the summer, I'm not wearing pants during my workout because it's just so hot. It was cooler today. I mentioned I'm racing to finish this before the rain starts because we are getting rain today. I actually got a few drops earlier, but then it stopped. But um, it was a little on the cooler side today, so when I was getting dressed, oh, here it comes. <laughs> it is now raining. Um, when I was getting dressed, I decided to put on pants always within the first like two minutes of wearing pants for my workout, unless it's like totally freezing, I'm always regretting it. It's like my legs are like so hot and I was wishing I was wearing shorts, but also had I been wearing shorts, then I'm gripping the ball with my uh, bare leg, my skin. And it allows me to have a much more secure grip on the ball. Whereas the, with the pants, the, the fabric, it kind of slides a little and it makes it difficult to uh, maintain a good grip on the ball sometimes. So it slips. Um, it's okay, you know, just go with it if it happens. But make sure that your weight that you choose is safe so that if something like that happens while you're doing the leg lift or at any point during the workout you don't hurt yourself and you don't drop a heavy weight on you somewhere complete until we have done our bonus burpee however 
when I do a jump rope workout, in addition to my bonus burpee, I also like to do a bonus set of 100 skips. So totally optional, but if you would like to join me, we're just gonna count 100 revolutions of the jump rope. So counting like this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. That is 100. inside so we're gonna finish the video in my living room it's actually let up now um, quite a bit if it if it hasn't stopped entirely but it's too late everything's just all wet back there and I have to move things around so um, it's not worth it to try to finish the video outside so um, you know you, you gotta go with the flow uh, so let me just walk you through all the exercises it's only five exercises, and then I'm gonna give equipment-free modifications as well, but let me start with jump rope. So, the workouts lately have been really, uh, as I said in the beginning, very highly customizable. So again, with this one, you can mix and match. So that first five minutes we did, the, um, the little circuit with the oogie ball, was a super tough five minutes, so you can always just do that three times and make yourself a 15-minute workout. That's great, that would be a great workout. If, again, if you're looking for a five or 10 minute workout, you can do it once, you can do it twice. Um, so that's an option. You can always just eliminate the jump rope section entirely and do just the circuit. If you want to do what I'm doing and you wanna break up the circuit with those little bits of cardio but you don't have a jump rope, you can always just substitute with some other type of cardio exercise. So when I'm jumping rope, I always just kind of do this, right? like jog in place. So you can do that. You can just do like jog in place with me, like essentially jumping rope without the rope. They also make those little like handles. It's basically a jump rope without the jump rope. I don't know how much they cost. Um, I've seen them before. I know they exist. So you might want to look into that. But to me, unless they're weighted, um, I don't see much of a point. There's got to be something more to them. But you're basically holding on to handles and pretending you're jumping rope without actually jumping over anything. So I think you can do that without actually holding on to anything. So that's an option. Um, or you can just jog in place. You can do high knees. You can do um, jumping jacks. You can do twist jumps, mountain climbers. You can jump side to side over an obstacle. Um, you can, if you have a treadmill, or an exercise bike, you can hop on there for five minutes. You can jog around the block if it's not raining. If you live in an apartment complex, you can do up and down the steps for five minutes. So use what's available to you. Use your space, get creative, and make it work for you. Um, if you do have a jump rope, you don't have to jump rope the way I'm jumping rope. You can do any variation of jump rope you want. So if you're more comfortable jumping with your feet together, or doing something a little more challenging. If you're better at jump rope than I am and you wanna do something that requires a little more skill, 
uh, a little more creativity, um, you can increase the difficulty level and do jump rope jacks or side to side jumps or twist jumps or double unders, like whatever you wanna do is fine. So now the circuit. Um, so my Uki ball weighs eight pounds. This is a great piece of equipment. This is like a hybrid between a medicine ball and a Swiss ball, one of those big balance balls. Um, and it can be used for a lot of different things. So the pink one weighs eight pounds and sometimes I use it as a weight. That's why the weight is significant. And they make one lighter than this. I wanna say it's like gray or purple that weighs six pounds and they make heavier ones as well. Um, I think there's a 10 pound and a 12 pound. I, I don't remember, I've had this ball forever. And um, it's good quality, like it doesn't have a scratch or anything on it. That's why I don't know currently what's available because I've had this one for so long and I'm sure there's new stuff available by now, but UGI, I think they say it Uji, but I've always said it Ugi, but regardless, if you want to look into getting one of these, I do think it's a great piece of equipment and I use mine often. So if you plan on following my workouts regularly, I don't think it's a bad idea to invest in one of these. However, as much as it is a good piece of equipment and you will get a lot of use out of it. I will say that it is pricey. Mine was a Christmas present. <laughs> I don't know that I could have brought myself to spend that kind of money on this if it wasn't a Christmas gift. Um, it's not like it costs like thousands of dollars. I think it was like, to the best of my recollection, maybe $120, something in that neighborhood, I don't remember. But um, I'm not sponsored or anything. It's not like I'm trying to sell these balls. I'm absolutely not. I don't have like a promo code to give you. I'm just letting you know that if you're wanting to follow my workouts regularly, rather than having to, you know, constantly modify and make substitutions, I do my best to always provide that stuff for you. But instead of always having to do that, it is better when you have the equipment I'm using and then you can just do what I'm doing. So I'm just putting it out there that if you want to invest in something like this, it is a bit pricey, but... It is a great piece of equipment, it is well made, and you will get a lot of use out of it if you follow my workouts regularly. So, something to think about. Um, let me first go through the exercises with the ball the way I was doing them, and then I will give you equipment-free modifications. So the first exercise I was doing was squats. I was holding, I was weighting the squats by holding the ball over my head, and then I was adding an oblique knee twist, alternating sides for the knee twist with each rep. So I have my eight pound oogie ball I'm holding it up over my head. And then I'm gonna sink down into my squat. Remembering with the squats, it's a little bit of a challenge when you're holding something over your head because usually the first thing I tell you is squats the shoulders back and down. So it's a little bit of a challenge because you're holding something over your head so that instinct is to wanna to have your shoulders up. But even though you're holding a ball over your head, think about having those shoulders back meaning that you're kind of pinching your shoulder blades together and down, meaning away from your ears. So even though you're holding a ball, you wanna do your best not to have your shoulders up here, but down here, okay? So be aware of that. Chest lifted high, strong, tight, engaged core. Feel those abs, keep your core tight the whole time and keep your back flat. You want a straight, flat back when you're doing your squats. The first thing you want to think of when doing any variation of squat is pushing that booty back as though you're trying to touch the wall behind you with your booty. So stick your booty back, keeping your back flat and your chest lifted high. Core is engaged the whole time. Feel those abs, keeping the weight in your heels. From there, you want to go ahead and sink down into your squat. Okay, but always keeping the weight in your heels, keeping your back flat and doing your best to keep the shoulders back and down, chest is lifted high. So that's the proper technique for a squat. The exercise is basically just a, that what I just showed you, a squat, but holding the weight above your head. So push the booty back, weight in the heels, sink down into your squat. Now press uh, those heels into the floor, reverse the movement, come back up, and on the way up, you're gonna lift one knee, and you're gonna twist your body, doing an oblique, knee crunch, twisting your body to meet that knee with the opposite elbow, like that. Return to your starting position. And we're alternating sides with each rep, so now squat, and oblique knee twist on the other side. So lifting the other leg, twist, 
and make that knee with the opposite elbow. Squat, oblique knee twist, other side, squat, oblique knee twist. The next exercise was forward lunges. I was lunging onto the oogie ball. So this is a good example of the versatility of the ball. For the squats, I was using the ball as a weight. And for this exercise, the benefit I get out of the ball is that it's an unstable surface. So it increases the difficulty of the forward lunges a lot because as I lunge forward, my foot, my lunging foot is landing on this unstable surface. And so I have to really work hard and really engage my core and really use a lot of focus to balance and make sure that I don't slide around and fall off the ball, okay? So um, it's just another example of, like I'm saying, the versatility of the ball. There's a lot of different ways you can use it, but that's how we're using it for this exercise. So the main thing with lunges, and especially with forward lunges, is that you want to make sure that your knees are not going over your toes in your lunging foot. So as you lunge forward and that foot lands on the ball, um, the next step is to bend both knees so that you are in this lunge position. If your range of motion allows you to tap this back knee on the floor, great. It's a little bit more difficult when the front foot is elevated. It requires a greater range of motion. So work to your own level. You don't have to tap that back knee on the floor. Just sink down as low as you can into the lunge. So if you're here, you're here, that's fine. If you can come all the way down here and tap the knee, great, do it. Just be careful that you are controlling the movement on the way down so that you're not slapping that knee into the floor. I don't mind anyone getting injured. Um, always control the movement, control the movement into the lunge and control the movement back uh, up from the lunge, okay? But the main thing to keep in mind with your lunges is that as you sink into your lunge position, this front leg, you do not want your knees to end up so that they're past the toes on this foot. You want them ideally to be more over your ankle, your uh, foot, or more over your heel of that lunging foot, okay? I'm not gonna come to your house with a, what do you call it thing, like a protractor or something and measure the angle of your leg and make sure that there's an exact 90 degree angle in your uh, ankle, okay? So it doesn't have to be exactly super duper 100% perfect like where this is a perfect right angle right here. But you just wanna make sure that you're not lunging forward so much that the knee is coming over the toes because um, it's just, it's too much of a strain on your knee and you could injure yourself. Okay, so do your best as you're lunging to uh, keep the weight again more or less in the heel of this foot. It doesn't have to stay, and especially because this is an unstable surface, my foot is, I'm gonna need a little leeway um, because even if my foot lands right there on the ball, I still, my momentum might carry it here or here, and that's gonna affect that angle, but generally just try to think of keeping those knees more over the heel of that lunging foot than the toes, and don't let them go out too far over the toes, okay? But that's the exercise, very simple. Forward lunge, lunging onto the oogie ball, and just switching legs with each rep. All right, so that's exercise number two. So moving on to abs, the easy way to remember what order, what exercise you're in in the circuit is SLAP, S-L-A-P. Um, this is a concept that I love that I stole from my friend Sarah. She used to make amazing uh, at-home style workout videos like this. I used to follow along with her videos all the time. Um, she's incredibly talented. She is a personal trainer and she makes these videos, or she used to, I don't think she makes videos anymore, but um, she, that is the tip of the iceberg. She is a wife and a mother of two amazing children. She uh, is a small business owner. She is so creative. Oh my God, she's one of these people that like decorates Kate, like, oh my God, she could be on like those competition shows and she is like a, will go one of these people too that will go and find like this old ugly 
uh, dress that somebody threw away on the side of the street and bring it home and make it into something gorgeous. She's an artist. She, I mean, she's just, it's endless. Her, her list of talents is endless. But <laughs> why am I talking about my friend Sarah today? Because this concept, S-L-A-P, squats, lunges, abs, and push-ups. I stole it from her and I love it. Um, this morning, I really didn't know what I was going to do for my workout. So it's a great thing to remember when you want to do a workout and you can't think of anything to do, just do a slap workout, S-L-A-P, squats, lunges, abs, and push-ups. So um, we did our squat variation first, then we did our lunges. Next is abs. We're doing two ab exercises because I have five little slots to fill for my uh, circuit, so I'm doing two ab exercises. But that's how you can remember where, <laughs> Paul does not want to roll to me. That's how you can remember where you are in the circuit, S-L-A-P. So for our first ab exercise, I was doing Russian twists. So again, this ball is eight pounds. Um, all I was doing was twisting from side to side, tapping the ball on the ground on either side of me. So first, lift up your feet if you can. If you are unable to do this exercise with your feet elevated, you can tap them down on the mat as needed or you can just keep them on the mat the whole time. That's up to you. If you're able to, um, you'll get more benefit, a greater benefit of the exercise. It'll be more challenging if you raise your feet off the ground and keep them elevated. It's only a 20 second work interval, so try it. And then holding onto the ball, I'm gonna start with the ball to one side of me and then I'm just gonna pick it up, twist my body, and tap the ball on the other side. That's the whole exercise, okay? Twist and tap, twist and tap, twist and tap, twist and tap. Super simple. So the next ab exercise was leg lifts and I was um, increasing the challenge by adding weight to the leg lifts by squeezing my oogie ball between my ankles. And this time I'm going to lift up my pants so that I have better control. Um, I mentioned it during the workout that uh, I lost control of the ball and it's mainly because I think that I wasn't able to grip it as well wearing pants. So something to keep in mind if you have one of these or if you're going to invest in one that it's probably better to wear either short, like those pants like that, like a pre pants or shorts. Um, or maybe if you have a few seconds to lift up your pants, just be careful um, because this ball is kind of, it weighs eight pounds, but it's soft. So if I'm using it for an exercise like that, um, it's okay if it falls, it's not gonna hurt me. So just take care when you are choosing your weight. Um, so all I was doing was I have my pants like under my, my little booty just for comfort, but if you're comfortable with them to the side, you can have them to the side. I would just kind of tuck them under my booty. And then I'm just gripping the ball as tightly as I can. So you have to actively squeeze your ankles together the whole time. I'm squeezing the ball between my ankles and then just lifting my legs and then lowering. Again, controlling the movement on the way up. Pause. Here comes the rain again, and then control it on the way down and tap the ball to the ground. Okay, so doing your best not to just kind of let everything fall, but really squeeze the ankles together, squeeze the ball, and control the movement both ways. Okay? And that's the exercise. That's leg lifts. Okay, so i my pants back down now. Last exercise, S-L-A-P, or in our case, S-L-A-P, or a slope. You could call this a slope or S-L-O-A-P, but that's not a word. Squats, lunges, obliques, abs, push-ups, but it's a little mnemonic device to help you remember where you are in the circuit. I mean, you know, you guys, I'm just filling time on, pulling my pant legs back down. Okay, so push-up component, I had my feet elevated on the oogie ball. So again, for this exercise, we're using the ball not as a weight, but as an unstable surface. Um, it increases the difficulty of the push-ups a lot. Elevating your feet on any surface 
even if it's a stable surface like a plyo box or a chair, that still increases the difficulty of the push-ups, but elevating your feet on this type of unstable surface, again, it just causes all of those little stabilizer muscles in your core to have to just be constantly firing like crazy, and um, it increases the difficulty a lot. So, you could probably use a balance ball for this as well, but uh, it's a very simple exercise. So feet up on the oogie ball, simple, not easy, but simple. It's just a push up and then two reptile knee tucks. So from this position with my feet on the ball, I'm just gonna do a push up. So lowering the body, bending the elbows and lowering the body in one straight line until my nose taps the mat and then push up, keeping the body in one straight line the whole time. And now two reptile knee tucks. So I'm gonna take one knee and tuck it to the side as though I'm trying to touch the elbow of the arm on that same side and then return to the starting position. And then just repeat the knee tuck on the other side. So now bringing this knee to the side towards the elbow of the arm on that same side and return to the starting position. Okay, so push up, knee tuck, knee tuck. Push up, knee tuck, knee tuck. Equipment free modifications. Okay, so for the squats, I was using the ball as a weight. So if you don't have a ball, you can use some other type of weight. A medicine ball would be great. A dumbbell or a kettlebell. Um, again, just be careful because we have the weight overhead for this exercise. So I have done this exercise with a dumbbell before many times um, and it works fine. But again, just be mindful, be careful if you're holding weight above your head that you, if it's something that you don't feel 100% confident that you have the ability to maintain a tight grip on for the entire work interval, then I recommend not holding that weight above your head. Maybe modifying the exercise slightly or um, not using weight. Okay, so if you have um, a dumbbell or a kettlebell or a medicine ball or some other type of weight that you feel comfortable lifting up over your head or a household item like a jug of laundry detergent or a water bottle, something like that, you can do the same exercise, just holding on to uh, a different weight other than an oogie ball. If you have a heavy dumbbell or kettlebell that you would like to use, but you don't really feel 100% confident that you'll be able to not drop it on your head, <laughs> you can hold it in front of you. So if, um, Hi, little donkey. Let's say this little donkey is my dumbbell or my kettlebell. You can hold it right here and then do the same exercise from here. So holding the weight in front of you, squat, and then add your oblique knee twist, okay? He only weighs like a pound. So he's not giving me a great workout, but he's adorable. Um, okay, thank you, little donkey. And again, uh, household item will work just fine. Obviously, my donkey works fantastic for that. So equipment for you can do the same thing. So just do your squat, oblique knee twist without holding on to anything, not even a little baby donkey. Okay, so there's your equipment free modification. Next is forward lunges. So I was lunging forward onto my oogie ball. Um, if you don't have a ball, but you do have another low elevated surface, like a plyo box or a low chair or stool that's steady and sturdy that you can lunge onto. Um, you will lose the difficulty that comes with lunging onto an unstable surface, but um, if you know you can still lunge onto like a plyo box or something, just make sure whatever you have, like if you're gonna use these, my dining room chairs are probably too high, but let me just, or let me grab this little stool and I'll show you one example of um, how to take maybe a household item or something else and just and use it for this exercise but to make sure that it's um steady and that it's not going to slide from underneath you let me go grab a little stool and i'll show you okay so this stool ideally could be a little lower for this but just to demonstrate what i'm talking about um if you want to go ahead and use a low chair or a stool or cinder blocks or a milk crate or something else that you've got around the house that's nice and low, maybe like a low ottoman or something like that. Um, you could go ahead and use that as long as you can set something up like this to make sure, I, like usually for me putting this on 
a mat, a yoga mat, is sufficient to keep it from sliding around. So that as I lunge forward and put my foot up on this uh, elevated surface, it's not gonna slide from underneath me. Okay, it's nice and steady there. Um, like I said, this stool is a little bit high. Something lower than this would be better, but there's nothing wrong with this exercise. This is fine if you wanna do this, lunging onto an elevated surface that's not unstable. But just put it on a mat because if I had this right on the floor, it's just, it's too easy for me to, as I'm stepping on it, to have it slide and we don't want that. So if you're gonna opt for something like this, a household item, just put it on an exercise mat so it can't slide around on you. And what else would work for that is if you wanna take this workout to like a local park or um, your local high school, if you have access to the track at your local high school, um, bleachers would work for this or a park bench maybe, um, or the curb. So you could always take the workout if you don't have an elevated surface that you can use safely. You could always take the workout to a local park or your local high school track and use the bleachers or something like that. Um, certainly the bleachers are not going to slide around on you. So that's another option. If you need an option that you can do in your living room and you don't have, an elevated surface that will work or that you can safely use, then just do forward lunges. Um, so you will lose the uh, added difficulty that the ball brings, but it's fine if you need an equipment free option, just do forward lunges or any lunge variation. So again, as you're lunging forward, you wanna step forward with your lunging foot and then bend both knees, working to your own level. So um, explore your full range of motion. And if your full range of motion allows you to bring this knee all the way to the floor, fantastic. Again, making sure, sure that your knees are not going over your toes so that they're not farther out, farther than your toes. Like if I were to draw a line from my knee straight to the floor, it would not land in front of my foot. Okay, and then pushing into this standing leg to standing foot to stand back up, alternating sides, so lunge, step wide forward, then bend both knees as low as you can go, controlling the movement so that you don't bang that knee into the ground, and then pushing into your standing leg to return to your starting position. And again, if you don't have that full range of motion, work to your own level. If your lunge is here, great, then lunge to there, okay? that's fine. Um, don't push your body into doing something that it is not ready to do. Put in the work where you are and then eventually you'll get stronger and you'll see that range of motion increase and you'll be able to tap that knee all the way to the ground comfortably in a controlled movement without slamming it into the ground and hurting yourself. Um, if you're a beginner, you can always have something next to you for support, but just work to your own level. The main things to remember is um, to not push yourself beyond what you're ready to do, but to explore your full range of motion, lunge as deep as you can, and to try and keep those knees more over the heel of this lunging foot and not allow them to go forward over the toes. That is a lot easier to do in a reverse lunge. Uh, because in a forward lunge, your momentum is going forward and it's very easy to go too far and to let those knees go too far over the toes. But if you do a reverse lunge, you almost have to try to, uh, to do that. To put, so in a reverse lunge, if you're starting here and you're in your neutral position, instead of lunging forward, if you lunge back, so this leg that's farther away from you is gonna be my standing leg. The leg that's closer to you will be my lunging leg, so I'm going to lunge back and from here I'm going to bend both knees and sink down into my lunge. Because my momentum, and then return to the starting position, because my momentum is going back before I lunge down, it makes it much easier to keep this knee over this heel and to not let it be here. You would have to like try to do that, right? As you're lunging back, you would have to then kind of like pitch your body forward for no good reason. So if 
you are a beginner, it might be easier to start with reverse lunges, just to make sure that your lunge position, as you're down in the bottom of your lunge, that you have more of a 90 degree angle here in this front leg. And um, it just is a bit easier to do that if you're lunging backwards as opposed to lunging forwards. So that's another option, but really any lunge variation you wanna do is fine there. Next is Russian twists. So again, if you have a medicine ball or a kettlebell or a heavy dumbbell, that would be a great option. You could use a household item like your little donkey or something heavier than donkey, like a jug of laundry detergent. You could use a water bottle. Um, any type of weight you want to hold on to will work. So get creative, use what you've got. If you need an equipment free option, you can just do the exact same thing without adding weight. So lift the heels if you can, and then just tap the hands without holding on to anything. Tap your hands side to side. So starting with your hands on one side, twist and tap your hands to the other side of your mat. Twist and tap, twist and tap, okay? These are Russian twists without any added weight. So that is your equipment-free option. And again, if you're a beginner and you need to have your heels down on the mat, it's only a 20 second work interval. So try it if you can, even just a few reps with your heels off the mat if you can. And then whenever you need to tap them down, tap them down. And if that's still too much for you, you can just have your heels on the mat the whole time and just twist and tap. And again, work to your own level, work within your range of motion. So if your range of motion doesn't allow you to twist all the way from side to side so that you can tap the floor, just go as far as you can, okay? Don't push yourself to do something your body's not ready to do. Work to your own level. So if this is your Russian twist, then do this. Got it? One more ab exercise before we move on to push-ups, and that was leg lifts. So I was holding my oogie ball in between my ankles, but again, we saw how quickly that can go awry. So definitely I do not recommend attempting to use something like a kettlebell or uh, a dumbbell for this. I don't even know how you would do it, but please don't attempt to do that. It is not safe. If you don't have a ball like the one I'm using, then I highly recommend that you do the equipment-free version of this exercise. So leg lifts without any added weight, very simple. Again, I like to have my hands under my booty for comfort, extend the legs straight, and then just lift and lower. That's it. Control the movement on the way up. Control the movement on the way down. Keep your legs as straight as you can and lift them as high as you can, okay? Again, work to your own level. Work uh, within your own range of motion. And if that's too difficult for you, if you're a beginner, um, you can try keeping your knees bent. Try some sort of reverse crunch like this, okay? Any ab exercise is fine. So uh, if you can't do reverse crunches and you need help, I mean, there's a million different ab exercises. Um, if you can't find an ab exercise that you can do, or if you can't even, if you're like a super duper beginner or really overweight and it's hard for you to even get down on the mat, there are standing ab exercises you can do. So please don't give up. Please don't give up. Please just reach out because as always, if you have questions about anything that you're seeing, any of the specific exercises that we're doing today, uh, questions about how to modify them, questions about what kind of weight you can use. Um, if you need any more, any, any further instruction as far as beginner modifications or equipment-free modifications, um, if you have questions about how to set your timer, anything and everything you guys know, it is so important to me that the workouts are accessible to anyone and everyone who wants to do them with me. So if you have any questions or if you need any help, if there's an exercise you just can't do and you don't know uh, how to um, how to do the work, how to, how to find something to substitute for that exercise, just ask. I'm always here to help and answer questions. So if you're a total beginner and you can't even get down on the mat to do abs, um, you can still do the workout right along with me. 
I will show you how, so let me know if you need, need to see some standing ab exercises or something like that. And the same thing goes for the push-ups. Our last exercise is push-ups. We all know how to do push-ups from our knees, or at least maybe I think we're all aware that that's like the typical beginner modification and knee push-ups are great. But I know that for a lot of people, if you are a super duper beginner, um, knee push-ups are not easy for a lot of people. And you might think like, well, I can't, if I can't even do knee push-ups and I can't do push-ups and just, you know, that's it, I can't do push-ups. Yes, you can. And I will show you how. So if you think you can't even do a single push-up from your knees, you can still do push-ups. Please reach out to me. I'm not gonna show a whole video on it now, but I have made a video that shows you how anyone, you can do push-ups, okay? Please just reach out to me. Yes, you can do a push-up, I promise you can, even if you think you can't. So, um, I'm not gonna get into it now, but you can, yes you can, you can do push-ups. So, if you don't have a ball, again, you can use a chair or a stool or a milk crate or a cinder box or bleachers at your local high school track. Any type of elevated surface is fine. If it is a stable elevated surface, then the exercise is going to be slightly less difficult because our oogie ball was unstable. So remember it was all that extra core work, but it's still a great um, exercise if your elevated surface is stable. So if you have a chair or a stool or something, um, Again, just put it on your mat, like I'll show you with my dining room chair. So for something like this, the higher the surface that you are elevating your feet onto, the more challenging the push-up itself is going to be. Um, so this chair is pretty high. If you have something lower than this, like a milk crate or cinder blocks or bleachers or something like that, um, that's a way to increase the difficulty of your push-up, but not have it maybe be out of reach. This chair might be out of reach for some people. Maybe you can do push-ups from your toes, but with your toes on a surface this high, you might not be able to. So that's something to consider when choosing your elevated surface. And then of course, the other thing to consider is safety. You don't want it to slide around on you. So again, I'm demonstrating this with my chair on my yoga mat so that it can't slide around on me. So if you would like to elevate your feet on something other than an oogie ball, um, just keep those things in mind, but I'm showing you on my chair just to demonstrate, you can have your feet elevated onto a chair or a stool or something like this and do the same exercise from here. So push up, knee tuck, knee tuck, knee tuck, knee tuck. Okay, um, a plyo box would be great for that as well. And with plyo boxes, typically, like my plyo boxes came in a set of three. So there's a low one, a medium one, and a high one. This is roughly the size, the height of the medium plyo box. So they make a smaller one and there's a bigger one. So um, just make the decision that's best for you. But any type of elevated surface will work. Just make sure it is uh, steady and stable. Make sure it can hold your weight and it's not gonna slide around on you. And consider the height. Make sure it's the right height for you if you're gonna go that route. And of course, you always have the option of not elevating your feet. So you can do the same thing on the uh, floor or the ground. Okay, so do your push up from your toes or from your knees and then do your two reptile knee tucks. Push up, knee tuck, knee tuck. So bring the knee to the side to meet the elbow on the same side. Push ups from your knees would look like this. So even when you're from your knees, you wanna make sure that from the knees to the shoulders stays in one straight line as you're sinking down into your push up. So whether you're on your knees or your toes, what you don't want to do in your push ups is let your hips drop like this. And you see this arch in my back, that's really not good for you, so don't do that. You wanna keep your body in one straight line. If your hips are raised a little, that's fine. It's actually a way to make the push up slightly easier, um, and you're not gonna hurt yourself this way. So I'm not mad if you do this. You're not gonna hurt yourself. What you really don't wanna do is let those hips drop, 
okay? I'm exaggerating it here, but a lot of people do this on their push-ups. You don't wanna do that. So, one straight line in your body from your shoulders to your ankles as you lower your body down and push your body up. Same thing if you're doing the push-up from your knees. So, from the knees, don't drop the hips down, okay? Keep the hips lifted high and keep your body in one straight line from the shoulders to the knees. And in one straight line, controlling the movement, lower your chest to the mat, and then push yourself back up. And then from here, if you can, and you want to, you can come up to, onto your toes and do your two knee tucks. If you can't, or if it's too difficult, you can stay on your knees and just do push-ups or any push-up variation you want. Um, the other thing I wanna talk about with the push-ups is that I just said, lower your chest to the mat. That's what you wanna think of doing. Another common mistake, I would say the two most common mistakes people make when they're doing push-ups is dropping the hips and not thinking of lowering their chest to the mat, but thinking of lowering their head. And so what a lot of people do is they bend their arms, but it's hard, push-ups are hard, right? So you can bend your arms this much or this much. Your chest is not down to the mat yet. And maybe you're not strong enough to lower your chest to the mat yet. So to compensate for that, what a lot of people do is they'll lower their arms as low as they can go, but they wanna get down to the mat, so then they, they lower their head to the mat. And that's not, that's not what you wanna be doing. Okay, you'll notice a lot of people do this. If you watch people do push-ups, they'll be like kind of bobbing their head up and down like this. Please don't do that. <coughs> Keep your neck relaxed and don't move your head. Try to keep your head still. What you want to do is not think of getting your head to the mat, but your chest. So as you bend your arms and your body's in one straight line, my head is not moving. My head's staying put, I'm lowering my chest to the mat. If you are not strong enough yet or experienced enough yet and you haven't built up the strength to do that, then the way to compensate is not to bob your head down to the mat, but to just shorten your range of motion like I'm always reminding you. So the same thing applies to push-ups. If you can only bend your arms a little bit, then just go here. It's okay if this is your push-up. Okay, what's not okay is if this is your push-up or if this is your push-up, okay? I don't want anyone getting hurt, so use the proper form. Lower your body in one straight line as low as you can. So if that's here, that's here. You wanna think ideally of getting your chest all the way down to the mat, but if you're not at that level yet, work to your own level. But the main thing is that you don't wanna overcompensate by moving, bobbing your head up and down, and you don't want to let your hips drop, okay? Those really are the two most important points of form um, that you want to look at with your push-ups. So uh, the same thing applies if you're doing the push-ups from your knees. If you can only come here, then just come here. That's fine, okay? That's a push-up. You're working within your own, uh, or working to your own level. Don't try to compensate by bobbing your head up and down. Don't drop your hips. Um, and again, if doing the push-ups from your knees, if you have real bad knees, you can always double up your mat too or put something more than a mat under your knees, like a, a pillow or something. Keep that in mind. So if you are super overweight or you have really, really bad knees, and you can't do knee push-ups, then again, just reach out to me because there are other options. But I think for most people, it's just a 20 second work interval. So, so the majority of people, I think if you have enough uh, protection for your knees and you remember that you don't have to come all the way down if you're not able to do that, just bend your arms a little bit as much as you can and just focus on your form. And when you're tired, do your best to just rest in your blank position. I think most people, 
Um, even if you're a complete beginner can manage that, but I'm always here to help. So if you need to see if that's too much for you, you still can do the workout. Just reach out to me. I'm always happy to provide beginner modifications or substitutions. If you can't do the exercises the way I'm doing them and you can't even do the modifications, it's so important that you don't give up. We can find something that you can do, I promise. So that's it, that's all four exercises plus beginner modifications and equipment-free substitutions plus a million ideas of what you can do if you don't have a jump rope. So I believe that again, I have more than sufficiently explained and demonstrated every possible conceivable aspect of this workout as usual. This portion of the video took way, way too long, but it's just really important to me that um, everyone feels like the workouts are accessible to them. So that's why I take the time to demonstrate everything and explain everything in such detail. That's why I go over the, uh, the important point, points of doing the exercise, the exercises with proper form so that you understand what the exercise is and how to do it properly and no one's getting hurt. And that's why I take the time to give beginner modifications. So um, it takes a long time, but um, I do it because it's really important to me that um, when you're watching the workout, if I'm doing something you can't do, you don't just like scrap it, but that you think, okay, well, how can I modify that? How can I make it work for me? For, to work in my space, to work with the equipment that I have or don't have, to make it work for my fitness level. Um, there's always a way to make it work for you. So that's why I take so long on this portion of the video. And I know it makes the video like an hour long, but um, for people who need the additional guidance, hopefully <laughs> um, it's helping you to understand that there's always a way to modify and that um, you, any, there's none of my workouts that are out of reach for any of you, I promise. Um, and I'm always here to provide further assistance if needed. Uh, I think the only thing I did not go over in excruciating detail is how to set your timer so very quickly. Um, if you do the workout right along with the video, you don't need to worry about how to set your timer because you can use my timer. But if you want to go and do the workout on your own, you are going to set your timer for 10 second rest intervals, 20 second work intervals times 10 rounds. 10 rounds of 10 second rest, 20 seconds work. That's five minutes, okay? And you'll just keep repeating that. So you'll go through your circuit twice, that's your first five minutes, and then you'll jump rope for five minutes, 10 rounds of 10 seconds rest, 20 seconds work. And then you'll just repeat that as many times as you want. Like I said, it's a mix and match. So the workout progresses in increments of five, just do five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20, 30, you can do an hour whatever you feel like doing today, um, just mix and match and do the segments in whatever order you want. The other thing is I mentioned as I was doing the workout is that I was trying to keep the time in between those segments as short as possible. But obviously if you need a longer rest, you can always pause the video if you're working out along with the video, if you're doing it on your own. Take as long a rest as you need, but my, uh, my intent today was to keep it moving as quickly as I could because I didn't want to feel like I was doing a bunch of little five minute workouts. I wanted to feel like I was doing one long 30 minute workout. So um, something to keep in mind, again, do what works for you, but um, that's the way I was doing it. I was trying to keep those sections in between as short as possible so that it felt like one long workout. All right, I'm gonna stop talking. I, you guys, I, I had so much to do today. I was like, I was gonna do an hour, but I'm only gonna do a half an hour because I have so much to do today. This is avoidance. This is what avoidance looks like, okay? Don't be like me. I have so much to do, and I think that's part of the reason that I'm chit-chatting so much and making this uh, part of the video so long because I'm avoiding it because I don't want to do it, but I do have things I need to get to, so I'm going to wrap this up. I promise I'm going to wrap it up. But first, I have to say thank you. Thank you <laughs> to everyone who's been subscribing to my channel lately. If you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you to everyone who has been working out with me lately. Um, even if you're not working out, but you're just watching the videos, thank you. Um, keep watching them because eventually one day you're gonna see one that looks like something you wanna try and you're gonna work out with me and let me know when that happens because 
nothing will make me happier. Um, I have been getting a lot of new subscribers lately. I have no idea why, but I'm very appreciative. So thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you if you've been subscribed for years and years and years. I appreciate all of you so very, very much. If you're not subscribed already, please subscribe. Thank you um, for watching the videos and sharing them. Please feel free to share away. Thank you for your likes and all of your wonderful supportive comments. And especially to those of you who have been commenting with the secret code phrase of the day. So very quickly before I wrap this up, I will give you today's secret code phrase of the day. It is, I am running with scissors. So if you are still watching this workout after this workout, the workout was done like three hours ago. If you're still watching this video after all this time, thank you. I appreciate you. You rock. And um, let me know that someone is still watching by going down to the comment section and leaving me a comment that says, I am running with scissors. If you did this workout with me today, thank you so very much. Please let me know what you thought of it and how, me, how you did. Let me know what kind of modifications you made. Um, let me know your stats. How many calories did you burn? What was your average heart rate? Let me know how long your workout was, whether you did just five minutes, whether you did an hour. Um, just let me know how it went for you. That is it for today, and I will see you all next time. Bye.